Okay, so I've been doing a few videos on the original Raspberry Pi. This is the 512 model, the second edition of it. And uh, I've been doing some research into it, and I love this image. It has all the various Pis that were released right up to the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Now there's obviously some that stand out, almost all of them are in green, but uh, these two available in China uh, are red, and also this Brazilian one is a sort of, well, like a bluish green, and then there is the blue Pi. Uh, but let's concentrate on the red pies first of all. They've obviously been discussed on the Raspberry Pi forums and you can see this post. I'm living in China since some years ago so I have access to both the green, international and red Chinese version of Raspberry Pi. And they're asking if there's any differences between the boards. It does look cool but I guess it's just because we're so used to seeing them in green. Uh, you know, red really stands out. They were both manufactured under license by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. The red boards are only made in China and the green boards will only be made in Wales. And the reason that they made them different in colour is uh, because they don't carry the FCC CE marks. And for the article linked above, it's to improve availability in the Chinese market and stop them being imported into other countries. So back in 2013, there was this article, uh, 1.75 million sold so far. Uh, so I guess that means at that time there were 750,000 red pies uh, I don't know how long after that they were kept on being made, but uh, there was certainly a lot of them. So they're not rare, you just don't see them very much in Europe and America. So if we go back to the list, obviously we've got the Brazilian Pi 3B here from November 2017. Our approved reseller program is live in Brazil with Anatel approved Raspberry Pis in a rather delicious shade of blue on sale from today. So it's all about having different certification for different countries. So that would have been available in those territories, but there's one that really stands out and it's this one, the Blue Pi, uh, which is the original Pi 1, but this is the Rev 2 version. And recently, one came up on eBay. So you can see here, limited edition Blue Raspberry Pi 1 Model B. And uh, I tried to find history on it for you know how much they might sell for or anything like that, and uh, couldn't really find a lot on it because there wasn't very many that were released. Uh, it's, it's one of a thousand. And we can see from the original listing here, uh, there was five bids and uh, I think it came up at £45 initially. I bid the £45 on it and just left it, but I kept an eye on it and I set an alarm for when it was ending. And uh, yeah, it went up a few times after that, but I was, uh, I was pleased with the ending price. I thought £79.10 for something so limited was really good. So before I open it up and try it out, there is a great blog on it that I wanted to show. And it's from James Dawson, uh, the pie you couldn't buy, blue pie. And you can see same presentation box as I've got with a letter from Eben Upton, which I'll show in a minute. Back in 2013, exactly one year after the first Raspberry Pi was sold, RS Components, one of two licensed Raspberry Pi manufacturers at the time, released the limited production run of a thousand blue Raspberry Pis. They came with a certificate of authenticity signed by Eben Upton and a matching blue case from 1.9 Design in Wales. There was a pretty big catch though, they were never available to purchase, so how did you get one? The majority of them were donated to charities involving kids, educations, and some were given away as competition prizes, although it seems like a few slipped through the net. So James managed to get hold of one through eBay, uh, where well, this will be back in the day, so back in 2013. He spoke to the eBay seller and claims his friend that used to work for RS Components gave them to him. And this story from Tom's Hardware, Raspberry Pi manufacturers RS Group ends license after a decade. So there won't be any more Raspberry Pis made by RS Components. You can see the case here next to the red case. Uh, he also talks about the red Pi in this article. So the conclusion at the end, uh, the blue Pi is a cool device, however it's nothing more than a collector's item at this point. I haven't even attempted to power this one on, although I fully expect it will work. So I intend to power mine up, uh, so let's pull the lid off. And you can see the certificate of authenticity with the signature by Eben Upton. I'm not sure if it's, it's hard to tell if it's just a printout or if it's an actual signature. So I've overlaid the two images. The darker one is my one and the lighter one is James's from his blog. So see what you think. Is this the same signature? Uh, it's really hard to get the same angle. Uh, and obviously I'm taking it from a screenshot, but uh, maybe only Eben can answer. Here's the blue case that it comes with, with a bit of uh, ventilation at the bottom there, but not a great amount of cooling. And there's another blue case here. Now, these seals, I've actually opened them up because I wanted to see what was inside. 
Uh, these probably reseal quite well and I've used this little spudger to, to try and keep it as good as possible. So we can see in here, this bit is sealed, this bit hasn't been opened. Um, and in fact, the other seals, I don't think they've been opened before I had them. It said it was sealed and since I've opened them, there's some little creases on there. So I, I fully expect it that, that it's never been out of its packaging. So let's open that bit up. Try and do it with as minimal damage as possible. Yeah, it's gonna look like it's been opened, so I'm just gonna have to pull it open. Here we are. So my first look at a blue pie. It's actually really dark. I don't know how it's coming across on the camera, but looking at the screen, it's very, very dark. So here it is next to an original. Yeah, it's blue, but it's it's very dark. Doesn't look like it does in the pictures. Now I've got some SD cards I've used with uh, this Pi, but the overclock was at 1050, so I think I'm gonna remove all the overclocking before I boot this one up. I'm not gonna put my Pi Moroni fan shim on it, although if you saw my other video, the error was mine putting it on when it was actually switched on, but this still works fine, this one. So I've got it on this little micro SD card, so let's pop that into here first and have a look. Okay, you can see I've hashed out all of the overclocking settings that were here before. And let's plug it all in. So switch off my Pi 4 official adapter, pop a micro USB adapter on it, and we can plug that in. HDMI. Tight connections because they've not been used before. My mouse keyboard. I'm not going to worry about Ethernet cable. So let's switch on. Is it going to boot? No, because I haven't got an SD card. <laughs> so let's switch it off. Pop it in the adapter. And switch on again. We have lights. Although my monitor hasn't switched itself on yet. No, nope, nothing. Switch off and switch on again. I just get a flash. So let's try RetroPie because I've had RetroPie on here before. So RetroPie, let's get rid of that one. And try, oh, I need to plug in a controller if I'm gonna use RetroPie. And switch on. Ah, we've got we've got display now. It just lit up. Yeah, now it's booting up and detected all the ROMs. I showed this build, uh, but overclocked on a 512 Raspberry Pi. So if you want to see that and how it was set up and everything, I've got that in a different video. Yeah, that's working. So let's try a bit of SNES and Sunset Riders. Yeah, that's working absolutely fine. That's good to see on my limited edition Pi. So I'm going to put some pictures uh, at the end. I'll just put some stills at the end if you want to see just some close-ups of this blue Pi. Oh, I need to jump over this. But uh, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.